we are starting new section section two it is related to the relevant contract clauses of the extension of time and also how to identify events in this lecture we will talk only about the clauses for the notice of extension of time so let's get started the notice always depends on the contract so I would say 99% of all contracts require the notice of extension of time it because the client has to be prepared you know for uh, for any potential risks in the project completion that's why the any contract most of the contracts will defend the client and will protect him uh, from any AOT or any risks from project completion that's why it is normally required under any contract but it is often required within 28 days after the event has first arisen. So this requirement, the 28 days requirement, is inspired by the FEDIC. So there are two types of contracts, the FEDIC, but not actually many projects use pure FEDIC. They will actually have to change to change it a lot so it can suit the project requirements so say for example if just for example if the FEDIC is saying that you have to submit regular AOT submissions every month so the client will delete this requirement and he will add particulars so if the client wants any particular conditions which are not originally in the FEDIC they will add one section it's called the contract particulars so he will not follow the requirement of submitting AOT once a month but he will ask like maybe once every three months and maybe the client does not have full-time planning engineer for example to review all these submissions so that's why the client wants to suit the contract to his requirements and his needs so they will change a little bit in FEDIC so we have now the first type which is FEDIC or FEDIC with particulars the other type is a book, book contract so it is actually written you know uh, from scratch so it has nothing to do with the FEDIC. It is inspired a little bit by the FEDIC, you know, terms and the conditions. But because they are just a standard, there is some inspiration there. But it has nothing to do with clauses number or any references in the FEDIC. But in either type of contract, the notice of extension of time, it is often required within 28 days after the event has first arisen. The notice of extension of time will provide you with qualitative assessment. So if I am a contractor and I have an event from the client, something will delay me, something I believe or I, I think or I feel that it will delay the project because I'm not sure yet it will delay the project because I did not do my assessment yet. I did not do quantitative assessment. I did not use Promovera yet. I did not dive into the analysis. I know by experience or by whatever is shown to me in the program update that there is a, a risk to project completion. So I use this information as qualitative assessment. So I would say, uh, for example, in this schedule update, the recent schedule update, I have only five days of positive, positive float to the block work activity, for example. And I just got an instruction to change the block work. So I do not know really how much it will take or how much extension of time I will be entitled for it's because I have to prepare, you know, the consequences, evaluate the consequences of this event and then use the correct schedule update and then evaluate the extension of time but i do not have this information yet so i want to say there is a risk because of this event because there are many parties involved in the project you have a supplier you have a subcontractor you have the main contractor consultant client maybe project management contractor cost control contractor so they are all dealing with a lot of information on daily basis the client is not aware of every little thing going on on the project so for one change that seems maybe simple for the engineer or for a supplier or subcontractor but when you have the main program of work or the master program of work by the main contractor the program which we follow to complete the project there is actually high risk because there are it will the impact will be even 
bigger on subsequent activities so in this case i am highlighting that so i have to highlight that in writing that there is one event everyone take care you know whatever which whatever party in the project you raise the alarm uh, okay take care there is something going on it is not just easy change or something so you have to be careful in the qualitative assessment you are referring for example the early and delayed dates as per baseline program total float total float of the recent schedule updates so just to make you know uh, we will talk in the template in more details but just to have like you know sort of uh, demonstration about how the impact of this event so this is the purpose of the notice of extension of time and one important part is if you are in doubt that this event will cause EOT or not if you are in doubt submit it submit the notice of extension of time the worst the case you will not be entitled the worst the case the engineer or the consultant will reject it so just the rejected one notice it's not actually a big deal but if it's the other way around if you failed to submit the notice of extension of time it means that the claim is void you are not entitled for extension of time whenever you decided to submit for EOT at later stage so notice is very very important contractually everyone has you know to get the alarm and it is also uh, for the client you know interest because you know we can have all these delays in the program for whatever purposes you know and at later stage you have a program update that will tell you that the project it is impossible for the project to be completed on time it's impossible right now you have two months left for example in the project the program is forecasting three months it doesn't work like that you have to give him timely notice that's why it is required within 28 days after the event has first arisen it is not required after one year that's why the notice is very very important so we have to give the alarm for everyone and uh, the purpose for that is uh, the client will be be better prepared for the consequences and how to deal with the situation so if maybe the change is huge and there is no other way to prevent the extension of time so the client has to work with his commercial team for example to come up with some risk contingency plans or whatever or he can maybe intervene and try to minimize the delay manage it or control it uh, closely so that's why uh, the notice of extension of time it is uh, in huge benefit of the client do not underestimate it if you failed to submit the notice within 28 days or you failed to submit the notice at the first place you are not entitled for extension of time so this is the content of the extension of time we have four parts the first part is the subject so also you have to submit with official letter not in a meeting not in a transmittal you have to submit with official letter in the subject you mention it is notice of extension of time clearly so there is no doubt you do not mention notice of delay event notice of delay no notice of extension of time and you mention also the notice number whenever there is new event it will take a serial number so this is notice number five number ten and you mention also in the same subject the delay in which activity is it delay in false ceiling is it delay in uh, reinforcement work after that the opening statement this is the first paragraph of the letter you have to clearly state that delays are beyond contractors control so there is no also confusion about it who's responsible or it is you have to mention it is beyond contractors control or control and in many contracts it is actually written in the same format normally when they refer in the extension of time clauses they will mention yeah contractor is entitled if it is beyond the contractors reasonable control that's why you want to write it exactly like that so you can relate to the contractual paragraph and you mention again which activity the same activity you mentioned in the subject after that the nature of event so you have to record the event to start date through a document so is it an official instruction from the client so when it was received and what is the reference of this document was it a meeting so what was the change when was the meeting held 
and uh, what was the minutes of meeting because if you ever receive an, an instruction without minutes of meeting you cannot use that for EOT you have to get the proof of the event start date in writing through a document so if it is in a meeting it can have a minutes of meeting it must have minutes of meeting if it is not written in minutes of meeting you cannot send the notice and also you cannot proceed with the work anyway because it's not formal yet okay and uh, for some variable instructions some companies they use one format it's called the confirmation of variable instruction cvi i worked in a project like that because we have so many changes going on so they just the contractor wants to fill a format send it to the engineer in writing officially this is what you told us should we move or not so in one way or another you have to get the proof of event start date in writing through any form of document and also you briefly explain how it affects the schedule for example you highlight the late dates from the baseline you highlight the total float amount of this activity as per the recent schedule update and finally you have the closing part so you mention again also so according to all of that so this is a notice of extension of time and you refer the relevant contract clauses the one we discussed in the last slide so there is one clause for the notice you refer to that as well and let's go for the template you can download it from this lecture and in general throughout the course when, whenever i refer to any document xcr or whatever you can always find it in the lecture downloads so this is a template one letter so i have here four parts which we discussed before so here i have the subject so this is an example so we mentioned notice of extension of time number five delay in which activity delay in full sealing activities the opening statement with reference to the above mentioned subject the contractor would like to record the delays associated with the full sealing activities which are beyond the reasonable control of the contractor third part of the notice the nature of event so you highlight you know the nature of event you relate to schedule delays so you mentioned the contractor received a design change via this letter dated 15th of april so this is a proof of the event start date uh, via a document as a result a resubmission of all engineering work is required to proceed with the full sealing activities furthermore such a change will have a significant impact on the subsequent activities taken into consideration the associated engineering and delivery activities while the late start date for such activity is 15th of may 2021 as per the approved baseline schedule this is the nature of event and finally you have a closure but here you know when i this is only one example this is a format so you can refer to the latest start date but what if you are having an activity which is in progress then the client stopped you so the work is in progress so you can refer to the late finish date so it's really up to you how you can write you know in the notice or how you can like refer the the schedule updates or any schedule data to highlight the delays the closure portion one to close 15 this is my close for the notice of extension of time and also close 20 extension of time so you have two clauses to refer because the purpose of all these letters is to prepare extension of time so actually it makes sense to also mention the clause of extension of time not only the notice of extension of time so i have two clauses one for the notice and the one for the extension of time in the main condition contract conditions of contract the contractor hereby writes to notify the consultant that the above stipulated event constitutes time and the cost implications to our contract that's it and i'm referring here throughout the course consultant or client it doesn't have to be consultant or client you have to use the contract language so some contracts they have they call the client employer and uh, the consultant as engineer so you always refer to the contract language how they call the parties 
are you a main contractor subcontractor nominated subcontractor so whatever you you are working for so just to make sure you use the contract language in the last lecture we talked about the clauses for notices of extension of extension of time and in this lecture now we will talk about clauses for EOT submissions EOT submissions unlike the notices the EOT submission itself is a quantitative assessment which means I am using my Promavera I am going through all activities I'm doing more work and at highest level of details it will give me at the end of the submission it will give me the proper entitlement for the submission it assesses the damage of delay events on the schedule so you can as i said so you clearly have an idea now about uh, how much delay every delay impact is producing in-depth analysis and evaluation it's a huge submission there is a whole section about writing you typically write everything about what a certain event is doing to the project or the schedule the frequency of submissions depend on the contract so it really depends on the contract but it is again often required within 28 days after the notice submission so for the notice we talked after the event has first arisen it is often required to send a notice within 28 days after the notice submission you still have 28 days also to submit the EOT submission as per the contract also an updated submission will also be required on a regular basis because we mentioned that in a, in a method like time impact analysis method so you are doing prospective method so you are having assumptions right about uh, the consequences of this event so some of them will be right or wrong the impact can be less than what you assumed or it can be higher most of the contracts will ask you to do updated submission of EOT I think the majority will require once a month so if you have EOT entitlement for two months for example because you have certain assumptions it will take that long as an impact for the event so maybe you will resubmit again you will have one and a half month or maybe you will have three months so the client has to be up to date with you he doesn't have to wait at the end of the project then he wakes up one day and he will find six months of extension of time and 15 million dollars of prolongation cost the court will not support you if you do that people relate to it as global claims you know when you do everything at once but it is not preferred even in court so you have to fulfill the contract requirements and stay up to date and the client also will have the chance to intervene and do some actions as a part of the two month EOT entitlement so there is one month duration of delivery material delivery so actually it is the client right to give you money because it's called acceleration not mitigation so to accelerate the schedule to give you money so you can ship the material by air freight not sea freight for example and you cannot object to that you cannot say this is my schedule I have to keep it like that to get the extension of time he cannot force you we'll talk later about mitigation and acceleration in details in the course but for the acceleration if he can give you money to accelerate the schedule and get it air freight you have to fulfill so the client now have the opportunity to review the AOT submissions throughout the project on a monthly basis or twice a month or whatever the contract is saying so he can maybe intervene and ask for a corrective action if necessary if you want to learn more about delay analysis you can join our course delay analysis mastery visit www.smartpmtraining.com or you can register immediately at the link below the video